Welcome to Romantic Tarot. This is Pisces season and Mercury retrograde. Let me say this. I'm going to call this retrograde romance for the next three weeks. Just an FYI to you guys out there. I know I can never like really figure out where I'm supposed to be looking. Let's go over this a little bit because Pisces season is going to be extremely emotional. Uh, why? Because, well, oh God, look at this wonkiness. I'm sorry, guys. Um, why? Good question. Uh, because Pisces is the memory of the Zodiac. Remember that. Pisces is water, and it's the water, the 12th sign, which means that those of you born in Pisces, supposedly, if you believe in reincarnation, you have existed as each of the other 11 signs before you've reached this point. So there's a lot of memory that's held in you. So when Mercury retrogrades into Pisces, there's a lot of things that can come up, and maybe, just maybe, things are even coming up from past lives. So, um... How do we get through this? Well, I feel like just like uh, uh you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to say it, a great sense of humor. A great sense of humor will help you laugh at yourself, it'll help you laugh at others. I mean, maybe not in their faces, but you know, if something slips out. Um Laughter is, I think, the best way to sort of pick yourself back up, especially if you fall flat on your face in front of everybody in the middle of a boardroom or a presentation. <laughs> the only way to redeem yourself is to figure out how to laugh at yourself. And so I think a great sense of humor is the key to especially surviving a very, very emotional retrograde. I know understand that i know most retro retrogrades can be emotional because they can they can inspire emotions in us especially when there's lack of communication there's usually frustration there could be anger um irritability because of the mechanical errors right and the technical errors that can cause a lot of frustration but i'm talking about even before frustration happens there's a lot of emotions that are going to come up um yes there could be texts from the exes. Yes, yes. And even you, one o'clock in the morning after a little too much Chardonnay, looking at that phone like, I'm just, I just have to be honest with him because it's honesty and I'm in love with him. So I'm just gonna like let him know because it's honesty and honesty, okay. And there will be a text that was sent that you probably don't even remember when you wake up probably sometime after 2 p.m. the next day, hung over, breath all nasty, please brush your teeth before you go to your cell phone and see a bunch of dick pics that have shown up between the hours of 3 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. The ones around 4.30 a.m. wondering why haven't you responded back. I'm just going to let you know this right now. A sense of humor is going to help you a lot. If the dick pics themselves don't make you laugh, then at least you can laugh at yourself and realize you don't have to respond to that text. You don't have to respond to any of them. You don't have to even respond to the fact that you drunk texted first. Why? Because in about three weeks, the universe is going to forget all about this, and you should too. So a great sense of humor is how you're going to survive. Why? Because especially from an intuitive water sign like me, I understand that the only way you can really break through to emotions um, tremendous amounts of emotions, which is what we, especially water signs and earth signs, are probably going to incur over this retrograde in Pisces. I can tell you this right now. You are not going to break through those emotions and those memories with um, logic, with pragmatism, with strategy. It's never going to happen. The only way you can affect emotion is with other emotions, emotions that counteract or sort of, you know, like a chemical reaction, neutralize the emotions that are about to bubble up. So how do you neutralize those really passionate, tumultuous emotions? Laughter and humor. Make yourself laugh, enjoy yourself, figure out a way to laugh at yourself, 
and others in a way that you can get them to laugh at themselves too. Laughter is the way to neutralize all of these tumultuous rolling, pulling, tumbling emotions, especially stumbling over our top. You guys have heard it. Last week, I couldn't even speak during my video. <laughs> I feel like it was not finding the words. So um, understand that it's already happening. It's already starting to affect us. Shadow period has already started to affect us. Mars goes into Capricorn. I don't think this is a bad time, actually, but it's going to be a very passionate time. And it could be a time when we risk making very emotional impulsive decisions based on old emotions that it's better if we just sort of gave ourselves time to feel to heal and then to make some decisions afterward so let's get into this romantic tarot this retrograde romance as it were for the first week in pisces season welcome to pisces season and happy retrograde because yes retrogrades can be absolutely exquisitely beautiful times of the year if we allow ourselves to slow down feel it to heal it and have patience with ourselves and a wonderful sense of humor we can actually learn a lot during a retrograde and a lot of wonderful things can come up that we missed or that other people missed. And some of those things can be actual blessings. So do not ever try to push or force your way through a retrograde. It, you, everything around you is going to break if you try to do. So do not ever try to push anything through a retrograde. Uh, take as much time as you need. Even job offers that are made to you during your retrograde, I would ask for a couple of weeks to think over and look over the offer and say that you have other offers on the table, but that this is this is one of your top offers, but you want some time to think and let people know that you're going to have to take some time when you're not reactionary or not, yeah, emotionally reactionary. Um, this is a good time to stop, feel, and heal. This is the, the excellent time um, to do something like, to do, to do that. So let's get in the car. Let's get in the car. As you can still see, I'm stuttering like crazy. Um, yeah, and then I'll keep happening. But like I said, I'm just going to laugh it off. So here we go. Oh, there was a channeled message that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I'm definitely starting with Scorpio. So don't worry about it, guys. But um, the channeled message, because I read a, a, me a meme, this morning and it, it made me think of something and I, I know that there's going to be a temptation to not only text the exes but to also stay in relationships or hold on to relationships that are not working out but we're going to try to self-deceive ourselves and make pretend like they're working out and probably compromise ourselves way, way too much and I just want to say this a relationship ending is not a failure that's not what it is. Everything has an end. This is a linear existence. And I know that energy doesn't have an end. But our energy in this form and experiences that we have through this form, 100% everything has an end. Okay? So understand that it's not a failure when a relationship ends. Everything has an end. Even the sun itself will have an end. So if something that amazing, miraculous, and powerful has an end, then don't feel like a failure when your relationship isn't working out. Remember that relationships only end when they've spent their time, they've spent their energy, they've used up the energy, and they've you've learned all you needed to learn from each other. And that's a blessing because there will be another beautiful relationship in the future people especially during a retrograde always just mistake the past as being closer than the future because they don't know it's in the future and the past is comfortable to them but there's nothing further away from you than something that used to be it's gone and it's over and the only way to get through that pain and that heartbreak is to allow yourself to keep walking forward and if you have to walk and cry at the same time then do it you can absolutely do it it's just like patting your head and running your rubbing your stomach it, it takes some practice you might stumble at first but you absolutely can do it so there will be a temptation going into this season to hold on to faltering relationships relationships that have been suffering but we don't want to see it and we could be at risk of 
putting ourselves into some really compromised positions to stay in relationships that just are supposed to be over, right? I call it the Norman Bates syndrome, rocking mama in the rocking chair, even though she's been dead for a couple years. You know, it's like, what do you really want to hold on to? Just something to hold on to? That's one thing that I want in particular us to be all really wary of as we go into this retrograde season. Not so much the text is from the exes, but um, the temptation to stay even three weeks longer in a relationship and to do ridiculous, and I will say this, desperate things to stay in those relationships that may compromise you later on. Don't compromise yourself because you're afraid of failure or you're afraid to let go. Don't compromise yourself. Believe, believe in your future and believe in those future loves that can't wait to kiss you and can't wait to hold you and can't wait to spend all those special times with you. Believe in them, absolutely. So Scorpio, we're starting off with you. I've already meditated over the cards. I've already shuffled the cards. So we're gonna jump right in. Scorpio, 1111 babies, let's do this. Um, oh, my pen. <laughs> It's even affecting pens, so I'm not going to question it. Scorpio, remember, this is your general retrograde romance love reading for the week. Easy to cross-watch, Scorpio, because all the zodiac signs are present in this one video. Timestamps will be here and um, in the description box below, as well as a comment so that you can reach the timestamps from mobile phone too. Beyond that, there's always an extended video, not what is coming towards you, but who is coming towards you. And we can get a better understanding of who that may be, their zodiac sign, what they may look like, their character, maybe even their profession, and about what time they may approach you. So if you're interested in that, Scorpio, please do go over. The extended link is in the comments with the timestamps and the description box below. <sighs> Choose love. You always have choice. Make yours with love. Choose love. And this is the energy of two plus one, which is three, which is divinity and divine. And I'm going to go in and choose and see what this card is right now. Adjustments are required. Um, this is really interesting. Third quarter moon. Adjustments are required and choose love. Now, I'm going to pull some clarifiers for you guys too because I want to make sure that I'm getting this reading right. I have a feeling like there are two different interpretations for this reading and that is number one, you may try to, like I said, be warned because we are water signs and we do get a little crazy when it comes to emotional overload and very emotional retrogrades. So understand that there could be this, this um, temptation to adjust too much, to do too much, to work too hard and to think too deeply about your partner, to be willing to over fantasize and believe our fantasy instead of the reality of what is in front of us when it comes to your relationships, what these cards are calling for, or at least saying for the next seven to 10 days. And remember this starts next weekend, right? So if you're curious about this week's uh, uh, predictions. You can watch this one or last week's Romantic Tarot as well. Um, is that you will be very, very open and responsive to making adjustments, especially fine-tuned adjustments. Now, like I said, this also could be encouraging you to do that as well. That's why I want to pull some clarifiers for this general reading is essentially um, stay in this relationship, believe in it. It does have its strengths. Choose love, which is un unconditional and compassion. If somebody has messed up, if somebody has disappointed you, try to understand them or trying to understand them, constantly trying to understand them, constantly trying to adjust. So I'm going to go ahead and call this even before I do the clarifier, Scorpio. This is a statement of be wary. Where are you in your relationship? Is this the first signs? Is this the first demonstration of something that could have disappointed you or something that you may have to make adjustments for? Then okay, then make adjustments, right? Because 
everybody deserves that first chance, maybe even that second chance. But how deep are you? That's my question to you. How deep are you into constantly making adjustments? And what are you getting out of them? Just more adjustments? Or is somebody adjusting for you as well? Is this an equal relationship anymore? Ask yourself that question because yes, adjustments could be required. And if this is something new that you guys have to talk about or work through, then absolutely those adjustments should be made. But if this is something that you have to keep readjusting and readjusting and readjusting, and it's an issue that continuously comes back up, then there's a re realization here that uh, the choose love means choose you and choose yourself and adjustments have to be made to how much you are loving yourself and sticking up for yourself. So it's just the situation of, you know, how, how much are you getting back and how deep are you into all these adjustments? Because if you find yourself constantly readjusting, that's a good sign that you need a change. And I just saw 555 pop up in front of me. So there's definitely got to be some change. Can we, yeah. First card out was heartbreak, heartbreak and disappointment. So it could very well be that when I say choose love, I don't always say choose the person you're with. I say choose love, choose compassion, choose connection, choose connectivity, and choose faith to believe that there is something out there that you don't have to keep compromising yourself for. Believe that in everything that you are, Scorpio, because you absolutely do deserve love and you don't always have to have a love that is suffering and struggle and pain. And even if you are suffering and struggling and going through pain, could be a good thing. It could be worth it. This could be somebody worth struggling and suffering for, but how long have you struggled and how long have you suffered and how long have you made had to make this adjustment to the same problem because the only person who's addressing it is you and not your partner. And that's why I say, for those of you in relationships, at least take a step back during this retrograde to see where you are. If this has just come up and this is just um, a situation that's just arrived, then of course, what can we do? Let's let's be open to working and working together and being supportive partners. But if this is the fifth, the sixth, the seventh time, the seventh year, it's not changing. Nothing's different. We go through it. We go crazy. We make up and then they go right back to it again. You might want to understand and start to realize that this pain is going to come back up. That this pain, that the, this retrograde is going to bring these pains back up to you. And it's going to remind you, and I'll tell you this right now, being attached to the water the way that you are, you're going to immediately start getting what you might call pettiness or vengefulness, but it's not because you'll start getting memories of how many times you've had to make the same adjustment. And that's what the retrograde is teaching you this week. It's reminding you, hey, how many times have we been here before? How many times have you had to make adjustments because you choose love, because you want love, because you want to stay with this love? How many times? How many times? The retrograde will remind you and make you relive it and make you suffer through each and every single one of those times. And I think if you feel overwhelmed, it's because you're supposed to be because the universe wants you to understand that this is a bad situation that you need to move on from. Okay, that's why. That's what the suffering is there for. It's not because the universe hates you. It's, it's trying to reach you and it's trying to talk to you and trying to tell you that this is the time to choose yourself, to choose real love, to choose, um, you know, to make changes and be prepared to make those changes, whatever they are. Now, of course, if this is, like I said, a newer situation or an ongoing situation where somebody you know is suffering from a real illness or disease, this is, this is saying, yeah, the suffering is going to be there. Yeah, the hurt is going to be there. Choose love every single time because it'll be the best investment and best bet. You will actually be doing your heart a favor by allowing it to suffer and hurt along with your partner through sickness and through health 
then giving up and running away, you'll never be able to forgive yourself. So that's an understanding and a deeper level for those of you who are going through like a real illness or a real sickness with a partner and your compassion is part of their healing and their pain is part of your learning. And you need each other for this cycle, sickness and health, just like you would any other time. So yes, this will be a feel it to heal it week for you, Scorpio, uh, whatever that lesson is. Um, get ready for get ready for the hard knocks lesson and it's going to be emotional if you are curious about who is coming towards you what um yeah yeah e even so who this partner is or um if you are a singles because this was primarily i felt for scorpios that had um Scorpios that already have a partner. For single Scorpios, I have to say, I think this is going to be ghosts from relationships past. And the challenge is going to be for you to still choose love. Find a way somehow to figure out why love would still be worth taking another chance on. And I know that it's always darkest before the dawn. And you'd only be asked this question because there's something beautiful coming. And that something beautiful has to have you allow it in. And if your doors are closed and your windows are shut, it's not going to get through. So if you're asked to feel and relive the pain of these relationships, these ghosts from relationships past, it is 100% to put them to their final rest so that you can get out of the graveyard and back into life and walk into that new love that's preparing itself for you. I'll see you on the extended. Um, all right. We have Sagittarius coming up. And yes, I take the timestamps right here, right along as I go. Why? So that I can put them up with the video ASAP as soon as I, hold on. Okay. So we have Scorpio and now we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius, these cards have already been pre-shuffled. I've already meditated on them. Um, I This is the first time of me seeing them along with you. If you are interested in an extended reading, that link is going to be in the description box below as well as a comment below so that you can reach it from mobile phone as well. It's really good to play with this video. You can easily cross watch because all of the zodiac signs are represented. So let's go. Sagittarius. Sagittarius, what can you expect with love? Um, so this is the energy of focus on love and look for the good in everyone. Um, Beauty and the Beast. Let me pull this energy from the other deck. Expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. Mm. So with these two cards, this is a change in you or a change in them. Now it could be your reaction to a change in them, but it could also be you reacting differently to them. And this would suggest being patient, being kind, not exploding. A change in you could ignite a change in them, which is instead of whatever you normally do. So if you normally would enable your partner by not saying anything or just going along with things, um, then what you would do is change and call them out and say, no, this is something that we need to confront this time around. If you would normally, um, if you would normally yell and scream and accuse and judge, then this is the time to be patient and let the beast be the beast and slowly come to you when it decides it's ready to come out of its cave. That's the energy of patience and kindness and, and change, change your reaction to somebody um, uh, based on a stillness, a calmness, Sagittarius. Uh, like I said, trying to find that emotional stability this week is not going to be the easiest. It will be a little bit easier for you being a fire sign um, than it will for uh, water or earth signs, but there will still be frustrations. So that's what I'm saying. This is um, how do you deal with frustrations? How do you handle frustrations? Um, and then, so how do you handle your own 
will affect how you handle your partners because there could be a lot of snafus, especially social snafus. There could be a lot of um, getting embarrassed or not being prepared or yeah, not having anything, not having things ready the way that you wanted them to. And because of that, you could take that home and be a little bit more pop offish when it comes to your partner. This is the energy of this could be you, it could be them, but this is definitely beauty taming the beast. Beauty in this respect can be love, just the essence of love itself, calming you down enough to sort of maybe nurture your own beast or love yourself even if you are disappointed or got upset or frustrated at your performance doing whatever you were doing. The end game here is by the time you're with your lover or by the time you're, you're in a more emotional place or um, talking about more emotional things that you can really have that open heart to understand and to listen. Um, this could be the energy of also um, somebody in your life who you never noticed before or somebody in your life who um, hasn't been your type, right? This could be suddenly there's a change in your taste, a change in your perceptive perception of people or perception of a particular person who um, will already be somebody that's already on your mind. This could also be a change in them right and who's coming towards you like i said that's in the extended that's the link below this might be an interesting reading for you sagittarius because um this could be actually somebody who's changing their ways towards you uh who's who's melancholy and the melancholy circumstance or situation um is helping them to be more um uh, reminiscent uh, and a little bit gentler, like taming the beast in a way. So this could be a very good week for you to be able to make some breakthroughs when it comes to somebody who had um, prior to this always been attacking you, screaming at you, yelling at you, accusing you, or fighting you. This could be a really good thing. Uh, this, uh, there's this, excuse me, this message is a message of, well, this could subdue them. This could be um, a calming down or a neutralizing of that energy, like we talked about in the introduction. Um, this could be a neutralizing of that energy so that you can actually get someplace and not necessarily manipulative, but talk or be able to speak to each other, um, reconcile. This is a great time for reconciliation. This is a great time for resolution. And this could be the opportunity because this person feels, it feels like they're going to be a little bit more subdued. Um, expect to change hard at work is what the clarifier came out as. So Sag, um, this is being recognized for your work or all your hard work actually making a breakthrough and showing some progress. This is work that you love. So it's something that you're very passionate about. It, this could be a, you were working on a court case, right? And your opposition is finally willing to listen to you. This could be actual work, right? Where you're actually... Um, or they're actually making a breakthrough so they're a little bit less irritable. But this is a sense, this just tells me that you have been hard at work at something and maybe you've been trying too hard. So during a retrograde, just now step back, stop the hard work and let the energy of appreciation come your way because that could very well be also what is coming towards you this week, Sagittarius. Nice, 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 nice. But remember... Do not try to push hard. If you try to push during a retrograde, you will break something. So this is basically a statement of trust the hard work that you've already done and now just let it be. Don't call them, let them call you. They probably will. All right, so Capricorn, uh, yeah, 2840, here we go. Capricorn energy. Capricorn, Capricorn, be authentic, be real and true to who you are and how you feel. There could be temptation this week. So this is nine plus three is 12, which is one plus two, which is three again. So this is the Holy Trinity and divine. And the truth is be honest, just to be authentic and be who you are. 
Um, a personal a personal issue reaches resolution, full moon and cancer. So this is a very healing week for you. But it's about going back and being true to yourself. That's what this is, especially with Cancerian energy. Cancerians hold on a long time. Um, I don't know if you're dealing with a Cancerian. That's something that we can talk about in the extended. Who is coming towards you? And of course, that link is below in the description box and the comment section. But um, it does definitely suggest that this is something that has been a long time coming or a resolution that needed to, to um, happen. Um, maybe you, first of all, somebody finally being authentic with you, somebody coming through an authentic apology, um, sort of maybe even a reconciliation. Um, but there is definitely um, this energy of be authentic with them. The first thing I... The first thing I felt when I felt the energy of this card for you guys is even, especially if you've been lonely too long, don't try to make something work that isn't. Don't try to grab onto a potential relationship during a retrograde because usually it's just about melancholy and sadness and loneliness and there's really nothing that's going to last a long time if you start a relationship during a retrograde. So just let it be what it is, which is I want somebody, but I don't want you, right? And then, and then, and that's okay. That's okay. But I want to say thank you for coming back to me. Thank you so much for um, talking to me and telling me this truth. I appreciate you for doing that. And be able to send them on their way with a loving, open heart. Don't try. If it don't fit, don't squeeze it, right? That's what I say to everybody all the time, every single opening. If it don't fit, don't squeeze it. And there could be a temptation for this to be a very emotional time um, to find your emotion, to, to, be, to be more um, considerate of people who would want to cling to you because it's almost like you need something to cling to too, um, which is not a normal state of being for you. But this retrograde can compromise that, can make you less stable than you normally would, especially in emotions, right? So um, the challenge this week will definitely be for the for you guys, Capricorn, to stay authentic to who you are and not react to any kind of loneliness or sadness, but keep up and stay who you are because that will actually pay out in the long run. Let me pull a clarifier. These clarifiers are coming. Yeah, this is sort of um, what I call boy energy you know um that's the energy of the, the king of the knight of wands coming back charging at you just like like it's passionate it's lustful but this is definitely the um revenge of the ex or somebody coming back from the past this is passionate this is flamboyancy but this is not consistency and this is not what you want long term um it could be fun for a while you know if you want to be let it be what it is and you can get into that kind of relationship then sure jump in but this is definitely fleeting energy that will pass any kind of move towards you or towards your heart will definitely be um, something that won't last this week um if you are in a long-term relationship, then this is sort of an emotional flare-up that's coming, maybe because somebody has been too authentic and too much themselves. But listen, the bottom line is that's still really good energy because it's truth and it's sincerity. And like it or not, whether you like what you've discovered or not, it will work out to actually be a healing and cathartic experience for you. The challenge for you guys is to not be reactionary and to not be defensive, um, but to also, it's usually, because you guys can be very extreme, it's usually either one way or the other. It's like, okay, if I'm going to bend, I'm going to like contortion, like Cirque du Soleil it, right? Or if I'm not, then I'm just going to like put up the Great Wall of China and not let you anywhere near me. The challenge is, how do I find that balance? How do I find that in between? Well, the secret here is to believe in yourself and believe in who you are, and believe that you can be happy all by yourself, or believe, um, um, stay true to uh, what really matters to you. I think that's what it is. So then it's not about just blasting somebody and diatribe. It's about, you know, what you really believe. And the, the easiest way to, to, the easiest way to argue any, any, any argument 
is to be honest, right? Lies are much more complicated than truth. Truth is just easy. And so if you're talking from an authentic place, a place of authenticity, then um, it's not gonna it's not gonna be an issue. And normally I wouldn't even have to have this conversation with you guys, but I but there's gonna be this surprise wave of emotion that's hitting you. It's going to make you melancholy. It's gonna make you wishy washy. And so I just want to remind you of who you are, and that you are or do have the strength to be your full self in a, even this week, even this week where it could be a little bit emotionally challenging. You absolutely have the ability to get through this. Um, you will have the energy. I would say use this passion for you. Use this passion in your own favor. There does seem to be a return of almost like a, what what was this like a pretty boy like a Casanova so male or female doesn't matter but that's the energy so be on the lookout for that energy this week because this person is that that energy is definitely present in this reading they are coming up so that you finally have a chance to say what you need to say to them and to end to end it and get let this energy be over there's sort of this energy of something has been left over something has been left behind something has been left unsaid and this is a very beautiful week to get the opportunity to say it not incite the opportunity just let it come to you once again that's i know that's difficult energy for you but i feel like if you aggress or if you make a move towards somebody you'll end up compromising yourself and stumbling more than you normally would so really just sort of like feel this one in terms of defense like just if nothing comes to you don't go to it that's that's what i want to say i'll see you guys in the extended capricorn all right now we move on to aquarius so that's 36 aquarius 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 I have once again meditated on these cards already. They're prepared. The message is prepared. This is what is coming towards you. And of course, all the timestamps are in the description box below um, and a comment below so you can reach it from mobile phones as well. There is an extended link to the extended who is coming towards you. So Aquarius, if you are, um, if you are interested in that energy, then please do go over and enjoy the extended. You can cross watch there too, because that's a full spread as well. So let's get into this energy. Aquarius, you are limitless. And this is a very Aquarius energy. You can do anything you choose. So this is unicorn energy, very much idealist, like the ideal creature, the ideal nature, the ideal character. And so when I get this card, it's usually the ideal mate. This is something that you thought would never happen. This is somebody that thought, you, you know, you thought you were just dreaming or making this person up in your head because feeling this kind of perfection is something that you really, I don't think even in your most ideal situations, could have actually conceived the real world being able to conceive and come up with. But this is... Um, for the most part, this sense of a once in a lifetime, a chance, um, an opportunity and um, something beautiful happening uh, that might have seemed right out of a dream. And now we have communication is key, new moon in Gemini. That's really difficult for this um, retrograde romance. Um, so you may find the right person, but it could be very, very difficult to be able to know what to say to them. What's interesting here, and it's suggested, is that being this twin energy of you don't really have to try that hard. Um, you don't have to really try to communicate that well. You could almost probably communicate psychically and not say any words at all. But but you do. You are a creature of thoughts and you like words and um, are very direct in them. So... Aquarius, this is sort of the energy of, um, normally I would say this is great energy because this is like, excuse me, finding a counterpart, right? That, that, that twin, um, receiving something new. This is new potential. This is the stage is set for, um, somebody new to come in and this could be beautiful. Um, 
uh, unicorn energy of somebody much like you, that twin energy. But because we're in a retrograde and Gemini is ruled by Mercury, understand that this, it's almost like the perfect situation happening at the perfect time, but having laryngitis. Um, I definitely pull a clarifier for you guys. So understand that. Just understand that it doesn't mean that even if something strange comes out of their mouth or comes out of your mouth, it doesn't mean that this isn't the perfect person. It doesn't mean this isn't the perfect situation. And in fact, it's almost like the worst time for the perfect person to come into your life. That's kind of what it feels like. But remember, this only lasts for three weeks, right? This retrograde, maybe even four because of as it's coming out, right? Of retrograde, but um, this is where goofiness and a sense of humor is really going to help you a great deal. Appreciate the goofiness, appreciate the not being able to find wor the right words, appreciate maybe even the clumsiness. I'm going to say that, like maybe even the clumsiness. Find a way to appreciate them. Um, um, see your foibles in them, see their foibles in you. It could be a Gemini coming in your life. We can find that out in the who's coming towards you, definitely. Um, um, but there's definitely, there's, just, there's this energy of something beautiful is about to happen to you. Really, this is more for singles than it is for, um, for couples. For couples, this is more of a, This is, could be very still very harmonious, this energy of being silly together, being doofy together, messing up together, uh, finding a way to actually love them deeper because of the goofiness and the silliness and all the imperfections that are coming out. It's almost like seeing them as more ideal than you did when you first met them because of all these um interesting facets that lie beneath that you're just starting to see it's like it's like instead of seeing the unicorn now you see all the details of the person underneath and that's actually more fascinating to you than the whole than the unicorn itself so it could very well be this breakdown in communication is actually just going to be almost like dissecting that person that you're with and i know that sounds crazy and nasty but it's not it's actually um you're now you're going to see these little bits and pieces of them and, and be fascinated by by all of those things. Let me pull a clarifier for you, um, clarifier for you, Aquarius. Um, and this is for energy too. Um, this is really interesting. And the, the chariot and the four of pentacles came out. So this is really basically having a stable ride, being able to go somewhere and make stable progress with somebody. It's hard to make stable progress through um, a retrograde, but this is emotionally stabilizing. There's something going on here that's emotionally stabilizing. And maybe it's that you've realized your partner or the person of your interest isn't perfect either and you're starting to see the imperfections but like i said it would have the effect of not necessarily breaking them down and not loving them but actually helping you to love them more and by by um by doing so actually stabilizing your progress slow and steady when these two cards come out together what did i say in the beginning of the reading take things slowly this they're they're actually really positive energy working together because it's progress but slow and steady and and stable because it's a four energy and this is the energy of four as well you've got a lot of stabilizing energy coming out so it's basically saying to you um this could be a really 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 good circumstance and situation for you really beautiful energy but you're going to have to take it slow don't try to rush um, unicorns are really swift and so is the chariot, but we're, we're getting to know somebody's details now, right? We're not, we're not just looking at, um, the whole picture or the whole car, Tesla model three, whatever you call it. Like we're not, we're not looking at the per perfection of the whole, uh, creature. We're actually being able to now like sit in a parking lot and learn all the bells and whistles and, and scroll through all the special um the special things and and get used to using those special things those bells and whistles that maybe we didn't even know we had 
that's what this is about. So it's about using this time of slowing it down to stabilize your progress. And you're stabilizing your progress by allowing yourself to get lost in the details of somebody or allowing them to get lost in the details of you this week. Why? Why will that stabilize you? Because then you'll be able to, you're really opening up to each other. You're really getting to know who the other person is and not just sort of your made up version of who they are right? This ideal version of who they are, but you're learning the little bits and pieces of them. And I'm telling you for the majority of you Aquarians, you're going to actually end up loving the person more, not realizing that they could get even more interesting than being a unicorn, right? That this is that special love, that this is that special opportunity, that special chance. And if you're not with somebody right now, this is about learning a little bit more deeply about somebody that maybe you've been trying to keep at bay, somebody that, um, um, maybe somebody is becoming more interesting to you than they were when you first saw them or first met them because you're starting to get to know their intricacies. You're starting to get to know their little de details and nuances are starting to come out about them. And you're actually starting to see that that's more fascinating than the whole and this, um, than the whole picture. And then, and then this, this is really stabilizing beautiful energy of just allow yourself to explore those details and those minute pathways instead of trying to push through and, and rush anything. I think, I just feel like you're really going to be enjoying those nuances of somebody this week and getting to know them better if you don't know them already. Definitely almost seeing things about somebody that you may, you may, I don't know, maybe you didn't, you weren't that impressed with the whole picture, but as you start to see these bits and pieces of them, they start to add up to something a lot more special. So let me know how it goes. I'll see you guys in the extended. Okay. Pisces. Oh, 45, 55. Wow. All right, Pisces. I have meditated on these cards already. I've already, um, the, the cards have already been organized. So um, I can jump right in. Remember the timestamps are in a comment are in the description box below and the comment section, but also there's a link to an extended tarot card reading of who is coming towards you. And that is very much built exactly like this. So it'll have all the Zodiac signs in one reading. Very great. Um, very, very good opportunity to cross watch because all the 12 Zodiac signs are available for you. Let's see what is coming towards you in love and romance. Act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you so you will always consider them. This is you feeling somebody. Um, I think that it's going to be a temptation, if not a requirement this week, Pisces, for you to be and happy Pisces season, by the way, happy, happy, happy Pisces season. This is almost going to be a moment for you to get lost in your dreams. And I think it's because your dreams are where you're going to connect with them first. This is the energy of connecting with somebody subliminally, somebody psychically, um, knowing who they are so completely and being sure and certain of their person or their nature or how they feel. That's what I'm talking about. It's not even... You don't like who cares how they look. It doesn't matter. They could shape shift in your dreams like a thousand different times. The point is that this feeling is real, that this connection beneath the surface is real. And that's what you're going to be really caught up in. If you want to interpret it as a dream, Pisces, then go ahead. I think on some level you will know that it's more than a dream. It's more than a fantasy. You're actually allowing the retrograde to... Uh, move you through all of these emotions and all of these experiences that you've lived through in this life or past lives to help you remember what it really feels like to be really, really loved. I think that this is that time to, um, to be open to that lesson from the universe, remembering what it feels like to be sincerely loved, to be with somebody who really appreciates you and want, and sweeps you off your feet and does all those things for you that, um, that you really need. I think some, somehow ultimately that you really need. Um, why, why is that happening to you? Hold on. 
a fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. Now, this is manifestation. This is that energy of something happening. So what this is telling me, Pisces, is somebody's about to go from fantasy and fiction to reality. That's what that's what these cards are telling me. There's there's just this energy of um, it could be even self manifestation of um, believing in something so completely that you actually dream them into life. Um, but that's why all these emotions are coming back from the past. It's almost like asking you to go through the inventory of your experiences with love and pick out the bits and pieces that work the best for you and then put them all together to see and feel this person that you're building for yourself. You're really building energetically for yourself. You're building this person and then energetically, if you focus on that energy and how this person in your psychic energy makes you feel, that's what you're going to start calling into you. Now, that's definitely for Pisces who are single. For Pisces who are in a relationship, this is also a sense of putting together and understanding and remembering everything you need, remembering all of those ideals, remembering and feeling and coming to the conclusion of what you really want in your circumstance and then bringing it to your bringing it to your relationship, bringing those dreams right into the bed with you and your partner. It's like, it's just manifesting them. Yes, of course, if you, you're curious about who's coming towards you, um, that link is below. Um, but there's just this energy of if you're in a relationship already, you being the one that brings the romance to the table this week. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's based on what you want and maybe what you've been missing and somebody else might be completely lost in the emotional hurricane that is going to be the next three weeks. But I don't think that you will. I think that you're going to be able to navigate the emotions very well. And I tell you, this is going to be a good opportunity for you to endear yourself deeper into their lives because emotionally, they're going to be the ones that could need a life raft. And being that you're the water itself or that you're the little, you're the fish in the water, you could definitely be of major assistance to them to teach them how to navigate these feelings. But it's also going to give you the advantage. This is like, um, this is Mars energy. Mars is in Capricorn. That's really interesting. Whew. Knowing what you want. Knowing what you want, it's all about not compromising and not being willing to compromise because it's so clear who, it's so clear what it is that actually makes you happy. Um, and that's the kind of clarity that those memories coming back will give you. So Pisces, what is this clarify? Oh, there you go. Good fortune. The wheel of fortune is here for you, Pisces. It's spinning in your favor because it came out upright. So is this a good time to, um, I, I wouldn't say leap, but this is a good time to be more aggressive in love. And it could have to do with just the faith that you feel in love, right? Um, not just you go up to somebody and hit on them. That's not the only thing I mean. I'm also talking about um, feeling that really strong sense of um, certainty in what you want. You may find somebody that you actually really, really want this week. And I think you'll have a level of certainty that you have not had in quite some time, Pisces. And this energy is all because you've remembered what it really felt like and what you really wanted. Instead of having other people tell you, you're going to be able to tell them. In instead of having other people like come up to you and sort of superimpose or imprint on you what they need out of love and you responding by being giving it to them, this is you knowing what you want in love and having no room for somebody else's imprinting. And because of that, that person will become so evident to you and literally be drawn to you or it'll draw your person, your partner, your current partner even closer to you. Oh, that is some serious energy manifestation. I love that. That's powerful. I think I'm going to call it Pisces. You got the power this week. You really do. Um, we're going to move on to Aries now. 53, 43. 
Um, Aries. Aries, Aries, Aries. I've already pre-shuffled the cards really quickly. I've already pre-shuffled the cards. I've already been through them. Um, I've meditated on them. So this is your message, Aries, for the first week in Pisces season with the Mercury retrograde happening in Pisces. Um, okay, let's just get it right. Please remember that there's always an extended link below and that all, both of these videos here and the extended always have all of the zodiac signs time stamped, time, time stamped. So they're actually really great for cross-watching. Here we go. At, oh, honesty is a set spench. That's me. It's been like that since shadow period. So honesty is essential. Speak with love and truth. Mm. Getting so lost in your dreams and fantasies that you forgot what the truth was. Getting so lost in romance that, that it's almost like, have you created them in the dream? Like living a dream. Living the dream that is best, best seen by moonlight because sunlight would expose too much of it. So there is that energy uh, that of the truth being hidden, the truth wanting to, wanting to hide the truth, the truth um, um, maybe being unmasked when the sun finally rises. This is next week, I feel like there is, um, hold on, let me see the moon card before I speak too soon. Luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius. This is being lost and swept up in a romance that, may not be sincere and it may not last forever but it may actually just sweep you off your feet for the next three weeks there is some energy coming in here uh, an opportunity that is going to be quite lovely and quite disarming and i think that you are just going to not be able to resist it like i say for many romances that happen in the retrograde that's what they are they're almost um they're a masquerade ball they're 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 meant to be, um, they're meant to be heightened. They're meant to be erotic. They're meant to be romantic, but they are not meant to last past that night. So this could last a long night. This could last, um, like I said, uh, up to three or four weeks. Uh, but there is definitely some, some sort of energy of love coming straight at you. Um, like I said, I would not Aries, uh, just because it's happening in a retrograde. And I honestly don't think that many relationships that start in retrogrades last very long, but I don't, all I can say, cause I, I'm not trying to predict the future here. Luck is on your side. There's some sort of romance coming, something unexpected, maybe something that was hidden, um, which means it could be somebody coming back from the past. But I think that there is an essential eroticism and romanticism that is underscoring everything about you. Um, Mars and Capricorn, your ruling planet going into such a hardcore, definite, I know what I want, these are my standards sign. I feel like... I don't think that you're actually going to care whether or not this is going to last long or not. Once you get your sights set on somebody, you're going to want them and you're he like spinning headlong into a circumstance, a, a circumstance or a romance that is going to be mind boggling areas, so mind bogglingly romantic. Um, could, wow, wow. The Hierophant came out. So I don't know if you could be dealing with a Taurus or, um, I don't think we'll get into who you're dealing with in who's coming toward you. If you're curious, please do go over there. The extended link is below, but this is definitely, uh, Aries. It, it, okay. So Taurus energy, it, it could be the Hierophant. It could be your ideals. It could be, um, what you want being very firmly established and knowing it, but it's also decadence to me. There's even more of that Venetian energy of luxury and beauty and, and decadence in luxury and beauty. So the more I read this, the more I see that you are going to be swept off your feet this week. You are going to, or you're going to sweep somebody off their feet this week. And you're not even going to care if it makes sense. And you're not even going to care. I mean, with Taurus energy here, it almost seems like, um, you should care, right? You, there, there should be this, uh, no, I don't feel it at all. I feel like this is about decadence. I feel like this is about luxury. I feel like this is about swimming in romance and doing things that not that, and, and just allowing yourself to find this person who, um, 
this is this is the energy of going running off to Vegas and getting married. That's what this is the energy of of not thinking about it, of letting your passions sweep you off your feet, and even though you don't know them well, getting married in Vegas. This is it. This is like the this Elvis Love Chapel marriage. And I don't know where it's going to go, but it's going to be some really passionate times for the two of you. Just that energy of being, um, of, of, of being spontaneous and letting the chaos in. That's the Sagittarius energy of maybe going too far or taking it too seriously and overindulging. That's that Venetian, Venetian Taurus energy. And then there's the energy of that romantic energy of really not knowing each other. Like, look at this card. It says honesty is essential, um, but that's not what this is, right? Like that he's in a mask and her back is toward him. So this is just about feeling the passion of somebody's touch without knowing them that well and not even caring about taking that mask off. You want, you want the mask on. You want the mask on. You want the moonlight out. You want the beautiful dress. You want the everything. You want the dream. You want the dream. You want the fantasy to be completely swimming all around you and to get completely caught up and lost in it. I understand that you would want that because, oh my God, who would resist it? Um, who could or would resist this energy? Aries, I don't know how it's going to be in three or four weeks, but I could honestly not feel you caring at all. At all. Um if this is the energy of um if this is the if this is energy happening toward couples you could actually be getting married this week even though there are even though your relationship is chaotic and even though there are things that you have not told each other um maybe this is um an unexpected engagement an unexpected proposal just coming at you from from like out of nowhere and you guys just spontaneously deciding to be married or it coming out that you actually were married or have been married for quite some time. Um, but this is definitely, um, or yeah, or just overindulging in, um, the decadence of your relationship and not really, um, worried about the more serious stuff for a while. Uh, I just see you guys going away somewhere, someplace really romantic and not taking yourself so seriously. I know the Hierophant is here, but I think it's more about just indulging in each other, indulging at least this week. You're just really indulging in somebody or hitting the mark or finally like, hold on, give me a second. Do you see this? Oh, I'm glad I took the time. So of course you see the bow and arrow here, right? But do you see this little bow and arrow here? And that little cherub? And it's aimed not at her heart, but at her back. This could be chasing after somebody you barely know. This could be just taking aim and going after somebody that that hasn't seen you or doesn't know that you were there yet or you don't know that they're there yet and somebody coming out of the blue that you don't know. Like, like there's definitely you don't know them because they have a mask on. So it's almost like something about somebody or something about this person coming out of the blue, coming up and surprising you somehow, um, surprising you with this love, a surprise love happening to you all of a sudden. There is this element of um, coming at you unexpectedly, um, not necessarily seeing this or being prepared for it and then letting it wash over you and sweep you off your feet. Ooh, I'm interested to know who's coming towards you. Like I said, that link is below. That would be a really interesting reading. I hope to see you over there, Aries. Um, ooh, didn't mean to flash you guys. Taurus, let's get down your numbers. Taurus. Mm. Hold on. Sorry, just needed a little second. Taurus. I've already pre I've, I've meditated on these cards. They're already ready for you. The messages are waiting. Of course, there's an extended video. It's in a the, it's in the description. The link to the extended video is in the description box below. 
um, and, as well as with the comment area and section for those of you to be able to access it on mobile phones as well. Taurus, um, that extended reading is who is coming towards you. So if you're curious about who, who they are, the description of the way that they may look, uh, how they act, a little bit of their background, all of those things can come out in that reading. It's just like this reading in that you'll have all the zodiac signs available to you. So it's a really great reading for cross watching just like this one. All right, Taurus, let's get into it. Um, miracles and blessings, everything has its gift. Well, this this card is usually um this card is usually having options of being able to uh make a choice. Um, and I do feel like there's there's just some sort of like a lot of people around. Uh, maybe being more social, um Taurus, uh, opportunities coming to you offers being made, emotions being shared, information being given. And this kind of stuff is just coming towards you. Now you're an earth sign, so it, it would make sense that you are almost drawing out people's emotions and you might be the recipient of a wave and wave, a wave after wave of emotions this week. So don't be surprised if a lot of people kind of land on your shores, Taurus. Um, it may come at you fast, but try to take your time as you look at and appreciate each of these opportunities. And I think that you will. I, I feel you feeling glad about the opportunities that are coming your way or about the love that is being given to you. Um, different kinds of not maybe gifts, maybe gifts or just words of kindness, um, words of support, um, words of love, you know, like little Valentines, maybe not, not particularly Valentines, but like little messages of love coming towards you this, uh, next weekend into the weekend after pouring in from all different areas and all different places. This is definitely the feeling Taurus that you are going to have options um, you and your loved ones are safe. New moon in Cancer. Wow. So this is, um, there's a lot of reminiscence here. There's a lot of um, being surrounded by people that you really love, being in the arms of the, needing, needing to be in the arms of the person that you really love and that you feel comfortable with, allowing yourself to st uh, stroll down memory lane with this person because they're a safe haven they're a safe place for you. Um, if you have kids, invite the kids in. All of you guys can go down memory lane together. Uh, walk that path together. This is a wonderful, beautiful time and opportunity for you during this romantic retrograde for you to be uh for you to indulge in this energy of reminiscence and the fact that everybody will be in this sort of melancholy um this melancholy time and it's not a bad thing it's a good thing because normally they would be like that not time for that or you know i'm not interested in that shit but at the same time now they're going to be like oh let's look through these old photo albums or oh i want to hear the story of you and so and so or that kind of energy of being able to share 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 do you see miracles and blessings um share all of those good memories, those happy thoughts, those good times. Um, and maybe for those of you who are singles, this is actually what's bringing or drawing opportunities into you. This sense of being open and open hearted, listening to somebody else share, you sharing, that sharing of normally you wouldn't be this open with a total stranger, but now you are. And it's almost like they feel comfortable with you. You feel comfortable with them. It being a little bit easier to get to know somebody because you're both sort of in this state of heightened emotions and not judging each other or not trying to close off. You're more open than you would be. This Cancerian energy is open, opening you very wide to listen and receive other people's memories as they listen to yours, other people's feelings as they listen to yours. The give and take and the ebb and flow of this energy can cause for romance to happen when you are not expecting it, but definitely when you're needing at the very least a hug. So yeah, there's definitely that energy of kind of needing a hug this week and, and, and wanting that kind of tender connection, not necessarily overtly. This is Taurus energy. Clarify, please. Not necessarily overt, overt energy. Oh, wait, 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 stop. 
it happened a long time ago and I just didn't see it. Um, hold on. It happened a long time ago and I just didn't see it. That's interesting energy. Um, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it coming. There it is. The three of pentacles. Um, of course, this is somebody recognizing you, somebody recognizing you for your work, somebody recognizing you for your quality, for who you are, um, coming together, being able to collaborate. So this is more energy of collaboration um, and it's pentacles energy. So it is, um, it's, if it's not something that you can rely on for long term, it's definitely going to stabilize you now. This, this energy of people wanting to talk with you and wanting to listen to you being like sort of in a circle and like a table in the round type of just sharing and allowing yourselves to care about each other. Receive this, receive it with an open heart, Taurus. This is an exceptional time for you to be able to do it. And I feel like there's this need, like you need it. You need that energy. It will heal you somehow to receive that kind of love and that kind of behavior from other people of, of course you can tell me about your mom. I want to tell you about my mom too. And you listen to each other's stories and you have that, you build that sort of safe place where that, where all of you can, where the two of you can be together, um, and, and be open with each other. So this is a really beautiful, healing, loving energy, um, to make you feel good again. Maybe there has been something that's made you feel off lately. And this kind of energy will help you heal that a little bit. Interesting. I do feel like there are a lot of people around, so there isn't one person in particular, but it's almost like anybody you meet this week or whoever you're around, whatever friends you hang around, it's like you're going to love them a little bit more. They're going to love you a little bit deeper because of this opening, this necessity that's almost like why you're seeking each other out in some ways. Um, I also see that this could be somebody that you are working with. I'm sorry about the eye thing that you're seeing that somebody that you're working with right now, and you may have a few different options of somebody who's in your life right now. And this is actually energy of it's healing. It's healing. In other words, their, their interest in you and the relationship that starts building between the two of you will actually help to heal those things that are hurting you right now, that those things that are making you doubt or suffer or um, just not feel right about life. This is a love that's coming in at just the right time. So who is coming towards you? That's a really great question, Taurus. Um, the who is coming, that, let's go to the extended and say, I'll see you guys over there. Um, Gemini. Okay. Gemini energy. Um, so Gemini, once again, uh, these car, yeah, Gemini, hey, so happy retrograde romance. Um, Gemini, I've already meditated on these cards. They're, it's ready for you. The message is ready to come out. Um, so I don't need to shuffle. Um, this is the, what is coming towards you, the general love reading during this retrograde romance, um, for next weekend out a little bit into this week, next weekend, between next weekend and the weekend after these energies are, um, swarming around about love and romance, um, and in, you know, sensual encounters, uh, if you are interested in who is coming towards you, that is an extended reading that I do built the same way as this is with all the zodiac signs in one. So it's really great to be able to cross watch. Um, that link is below and as well as in the comment section. So Gemini, new, yeah, new love, new love, Gemini. Interesting. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yep. Gemini, new love. Mm -hmm. Embrace an opportunity for love in your work prospects or for spiritual growth. I want to pair this. This is a beautiful card. Look. So this is Aquarian energy because whenever the star is falling, the star is like the star card for the tarot. It's the truth. It's the energy of truth. It's the energy of a true partner. It's something that fascinates you. It's something that you want to know deeper. It's an opportunity that maybe comes once in a lifetime. Um, but it's also very idealist energy, um, intrigue, and thing, uh, things of that nature. So 
uh, Gemini, this is something that I, th I feel like it's going to happen unexpectedly. Um, but it's also something that it may be the perfection of it that's unexpected because you get new opportunities for love all the time. People are attracted to you left and right, but there's just this energy of it being unexpectedly perfect and this, this person being unexpectedly um, special. So it could very well be just even the Mercury retrograde, the retrograde in Pisces is making even you more emotional than normal. But like I said, that's a really... It's almost like the tar our heart target, the target for love expands and grows. And so it's easier for people to hit it. More people can hit, hit it. It's, but it's, it's almost like now more people might be attracted to trying to hit it since it's, it's larger. And there's more, it's, it's clearer. It's clearer for us to know what it is that you want or what will make you happy. Um, or vice versa, this feeling for them, this energy of it just being more clear, you being able to actually like feel that, that falling star and be able to catch it this time because it's like that you got a bigger glove to catch it <laughs> kind, of, kind of energy let's see this the answers you need are coming full moon in gemini this is really beautiful this energy this is really beautiful energy for you gemini i love that energy for you so um Somebody's going to be telling you their feelings. Yeah. And I think that it's, it may, like I said, it may come out of the blue, um, but it's definitely coming out of something that's been building for a while. So this is the re revelation of um, emotions or feelings for you uh, because this is Gemini energy. Uh, in during the retrograde this is your energy this is beautiful energy because it matches you I love when cards match um match the sign that they're for um Mercury is in retrograde it rules your planet so it may be very well that it's taking away that sort of quick wit quick mind, quick thinking, that it's allowing you to be, that's opening you up to being more susceptible. Um, you may, I'm going to say this right now, and I hope this doesn't sound judgmental. You may be, um, you may have passed this opportunity up if you weren't slowed down enough to understand the beauty of it. And I think that that's where the retrograde is going to work in your favor because two plus six is eight and that's the number of destiny. So I, this was the time that it was supposed to come to you. Falling stars happen in perfect timing. I wonder if there's some astrological events happening, but this is like, it's fate. And I, 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 I think that you'll need to sort of be, I don't want to say a slower wit, because that makes it sound like this person is going to be an idiot coming towards you or that you're going to sound like an idiot. No, I just think that like that target for your heart that I described at first had to be open a little bit wider for this person to, to hit it, to, to, to be able to see it or see that you were open for it. Um, this, energy, this, 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 this face and this card is looking right toward the star. At least part of you is going to be able to see that this is a really beautiful opportunity. The answers you need are coming. First of all, this is definitely people coming out of the woodwork from your past that might help you understand certain things or different events or resolve different events that you needed to um, in the past. Um, but this is also a comprehension or an understanding of what it is that you really need to make you happy. And maybe, just maybe, this is the first time this is happening to you. Five of Wands. So this is a lot of competition. 
a um, lot of people contesting you, um, a lot of people blocking you or getting in your way or saying, so there's a lot of confusion. There was a lot of communication or passion confusion here. Um, not understanding what happened between you and somebody. This, it, this is a long unanswered question about maybe the love of your life or somebody you've never been able to get over. And of course you moved on, you being you, you absolutely moved on, but this is resolution to that long standing question of what happened. And I feel like there may have been years and lots of people that got in the way of, of the two of you and sort of helped to break you apart. And he said, she said, kind of energy, a lot of mumble, grumble, craziness, kind of um, sort of, sort of uh, mixed messages. And it's almost like this for me, okay. It's almost like this is the unscrambling of the scrambling that happened a long time ago. If that makes if that makes sense to you, because usually the five of wands it's just it's just petty BS. It's competition, and I feel like a lot of that got in the way of this, and it could very well be. Um, hold on, let me get these answers. It's hard for me to. No, that's what I feel, a hundred percent. That, that finally the right message is getting through Gemini. That this message has sat and waited and tried to get through for you for a, to, through to you for a while. And it's this retrograde that's finally going to give it the room to be able to get through. That's the kind of energy that I was picking up on when I read the first card of something is finally coming through. Something is finally able to reach you. Something is finally like something, something that was meant for you is finally getting through. But it's not just a person. It's how another person felt about you. You know, it's like it, 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 it's like the letter was delivered six years ago and it just got to your door now. That's what the retrograde is bringing back to you. So it's not about having to find the right words. It's about that other side of communication, right? That listening, that receiving. You will be receiving clarification on something that meant a great deal to you and it will come out of the blue um, and it will clarify your heart and I think make your heart grow 30 sizes. There's this energy of something finally breaking through. Something's finally going to reach you that needed to reach you a long time ago. This is a real breakthrough moment from the past and the past isn't something that you really care bother with. So I don't think that you've even maybe even prayed for this or thought about it a lot. Not that you, you know, you might have memories, but there you're going to have memories of this. It's going to come back to you. First, the emotions will flood back. And I think that those emotions will flood back right before um, this communication or breakthrough comes into you, this reception, right? Because it, there's just this energy of it is happening. You're being reminded of it for a reason. All these signs and synchronicities, you're picking up on it now because there's because to remind you to remind you and prepare you for what's coming in and what's coming in is it's beautiful it's absolutely destined i think it then on some level you have been wishing that this resolution would come There's been a lot of things that have gotten in the way of you in this resolution. A lot of blockages. But it's petty BS. And they're not going to stand up to it. This is being able to have the patience to have the, have the patience to say something clearly to wait, to not, to not jump on something. And you may have waited for this clear communication to come through for years because there has been this muffle, this, 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 uh, like a uh, white noise getting in the way. Um, and the retrograde is bringing that back around and like just punching right through the right white noise. Oh, I'm wondering who this is. So the who is coming towards you is in the extended link below. Ooh. 
Yeah, I can't wait to know. <laughs> All right, Cancer, this is you, 12323. Nice. All right. Cancer, I've already I've already shuffled the cards. I've already meditated on them. Um, so the messages are sitting here waiting for you. I'm going to pull a clarifier too. Um, remember the extended link below. This is the general who is going to, like what is going to happen to you? What What is the romance and um, sensuality energies for um, next weekend into the weekend after? But who is coming towards you? Who you're going to share that time and space with? That description of what they look like, who they are, what they sound like, what occupation, like lots of details about them and their why is uh, down below. That link is down below. That's the extended reading. It's, it's situated, I'm sorry, it's structured just like this reading. So you can definitely mix and match and cross watch very easily over there, just like you can here. All right, Cancer, let's get into your energy. Um, like attracts like. If you long for more love, be more loving. This is about preparing yourself to be your perfect partner so that the perfect partner comes to you. This is also about attracting a soulmate. Somebody who is destined for you. And I feel like you're already the person that you need to be to bring them to you. And that's what I feel like this, this card is saying, that you've called them in. You're already calling them in. And there is the, definitely this energy of, I think, understanding it and knowing it on both sides. Um, it be almost becoming clear. It's like this retrograde is actually clarifying things somehow. I know it's crazy. But Gemini got something similar in that it's almost like somehow this 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 retrograde is helping to uncover and reveal those things that sort of slipped through or were covered over or were hidden before. So there there's just this energy of just you like literally you being on sound blast and the volume being turned up to that signal you're sending out to your soulmate. This is also definitely saying that if you're already in a relationship, the two of you may be too much alike. The two of you may be very similar. So your, um, your troubles, if you're having communication issues between the two of you, it's because the two of you are so much alike that you're sort of um, seeing a mirror of each other. And that might, might be what you don't like seeing. Show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. That's brilliant energy. Oh, what I say, it's like, it's show, what I say, showing the mirror, like, like, like looking into a mirror and, and, and maybe it could be that the two of you are too alike and that the, that's the truth of your situation. And that's the foundation of the issues that you're having is that there's too much similar about the two of you. You keep rubbing each other the wrong way just because you don't want to see, you know, those foibles in yourself and, and your partner makes them see it in you. It's that energy of, um, you know, reflection, but this is about being able to then reflect on who you are and those things about yourself that you see in your partner or seeing your partner in yourself. Um, this is also about being sincere and true to everything that you are and being seen for everything that you are. Aquarius is the discovery and the unveiling of the truth and releasing the truth and being who you are um, instead of trying to be something that you're not. So this is definitely that warning of don't try to be something that you're not. Don't mirror or try to um, become who they need you to be so that you can stay with them. No, you have to be authentically yourself. And I know this message is coming through as a warning, Cancerians, a warning of, um, you know, your, your way to love this week is to be your authentic self, but you might be tempted to just be anything that they need you to be in order to be with them. So don't do that. Why? Because you want your authentic partner to come to you. You want the person who was built and designed for you to find you. The way to them is you, your truth, who you really are, even if it's ugly. I don't think that that's what a lot of Cancerians understand is that even our ugly is better than our, you know, codependent fakeness. It really is. It, it, even our, even, even when we're, when we're 
irritable and hard to be around and moody all over the place um, and being dislikable, right? That's actually more likable than when we are constantly like molding to whatever anybody else wants and it just gets to be exactly what they don't want and that's the problem and I think we get into that problem a lot so here's your solution here's your answer be who you are stop mirroring them and be authentic and true to everything that you are um if if you're true to yourself uh your individuality and your personality will shine and that's the shine that people fall in love with and that's the shine that if you're single attracts excuse me, I'm sorry, attracts who you really want in your life, who you really need in your life. That authenticity is the key to your romantic success this week. And there is a sense of like, show the world the real you. Um, um, if you long for more love, be more loving. I think that you can't I can't stress this enough. It's not loving somebody is not giving them everything that they want, agreeing with everything they think and reconstructing yourself in their image. That's not what love is. That's not love at all. That's fake, right? Um, love is showing your true you and being having enough confidence in them to know that they can love you no matter what. Um, having enough confidence in them to show them the real you. Have you? Have you shown your partner the real you? Or Cancerian, have you been doing the very Cancerian thing, which I've done too many times for me to add up in my broken relationships. Um, uh, too many times I have just become exactly what they wanted me to be or tried to be and said yes way too many times and too often to things that I wanted to be like, nah, I'm not even interested. Cancerian, you have to be like, nah, I'm not even interested. That's what you have to be this week. You have to be sincere and authentic. The reason why this is coming out is because honestly, I think you're at risk. You're either at risk for losing a relationship or somebody dumping you or um, losing the chance to be with somebody who could really love you if you would show them who you really are. Because in other words, somebody doesn't want to fall in love like Okay, I know, understand, please. I know you have to fall in love with who you are. You, who you are, who you see in the mirror. But that's not why you let another person into your life. You, fall, you let another person into your life to add something to your life. So if all they're doing is looking at themselves, they can get that at home. And it'll be so easy for them to walk away from you. Because it's easier for them to deal with themselves at home than deal with a whole other person. So this is a bring something new to the table by being exactly who you are. You have everything inside of you, Cancers, to be everything that they want. But everything that they want is who you are, not who you think they want and who you're making yourself into to please them. And that's the trick. And as difficult as it is, let me pull a clarifier, as difficult as it is, this is just about... Um, defensiveness that's the clarification defending something being like sticking up for what you who like but who are you defending um the way to save this relationship is to be authentic that's what it is that's what the statement is who you are dealing with, who's coming towards you, that link is below. Um, it's also in the comment section in case you're on mobile. Um, but let's think. Have you been hiding the real you? Show the world the real you and like attracts like. Oh, that's what this, this, oh, that's what the clarity. You've been preparing for this moment your whole life. You have been preparing this for this moment your whole life. You've been preparing and, and, and working your way into um, being able to be who you are, strong and powerful and confident. You have been probably working at something you really love for a long time. 
share that, be that, be everything about that. You may think it's obnoxious. You may think it's redundant. You may think it's repetitive, but somebody else is going to think that that's the most special thing in the world. Be prepared. This is something that you have been preparing for your whole life. And it's not about the other person. It's about letting the other person find you by being yourself and letting yourself shine. You have prepared for this your whole life. You've been preparing, you're prepared, you're prepared. Now just let it shine, Cancer. I can't wait to see who this person is coming at you. I'll see you guys in the extended. Um, oh, Leo. Leo. All right. So, Leo. Okay, these messages are prepared for you. They've been... I don't know what happened. Hold on. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you, Leo, for your Leo for your patience. So Libra, Leo, Leo, Leo. I'm sorry. I'm. I apologize. Leo, this is uh, the messages are ready for you. I've pre-shuffled and meditated over the cards. Um, this is the general who is like what is coming towards you. The general uh, romance readings of um, sort of the general emotions. The general like feelings of, of, of love and what could be happening to you during this retrograde, right? Um, if you are looking for who is coming towards you, that is in the extended, um, that link is below in the description box, as well as the comment section. If you're watching this on mobile, it will be easier for you to access. You can cross watch that as easily as you cross watch this video because that's all time stamped too. So let's get right into it. Leo actions speak loudly, express your love through actions. You're just going to go for it. In the middle of a retrograde, only you would be so bold to just basically speak your mind and say what you feel. Understand that it is still a retrograde and that there still can be, like I've been the whole time, my Venus and my Mercury is in Leo. So FYI, you could be stumbling over your words. I don't think that you'll be stumbling over your confidence, but you could be stumbling over your words. So your words may not be as confident and may not hold you up the way that you really need to, <laughs> at least not this coming week. Um, so there could just be, understand that, yes, I know that your, your momentum is there. I know that your energy is there, but... Um, expressing yourself through actions rather than words is probably going to work better for you. You're a fire sign. You're a sign of action. So that's going to be your best sort of um, uh, attack mode is actions. Show somebody. Show, show, show. Do, do, do. Don't try to say because the saying could stumble all over the place and then get you into a situation where you don't really want to be, to be completely honest with you. So just be prepared for that. But this is definitely the time of, hold on, this is definitely the time for you to um, be the aggressor. I think you've already seen what you want. There, I, go, I think you already know what you want. And this is definitely the time to go for it. You may have to travel. This is the this is a sort of going a distance, uh, carrying what you have one place to somebody else elsewhere. Maybe just the fact that you're traveling to go see this person is demonstrating to them how much you care and how you can't stop thinking about them. What do you need to release? Waning moon. What do you need to let go of on the other side before you spring and take this leap? Prepare yourself so that you don't take along any extra baggage. Do you need to release baggage? Do you need to let it go? Do you need to leave baggage behind so that you can fly free to go meet somebody on the other side? What do you need to release, Leo, so that you can be completely available when you reach your person and when you're ready to, like you're ready to show your love i think you're ready to basically step into the forum of love and romance and sensuality this week but there is that sense of um maybe that's what you need to let go of any kind of um hold on i want to take this nine plus four this 13 four stable i think you've made a choice I feel like when, when this card is, what do you need to release? I think it's you need to release your arrow. That's what it is. You're just so ready to basically, you've pulled back, you've held back, you've thought about this, and you're ready to just shoot and take aim. 
it is risky in a retrograde, but that's not even on your mind right now. I feel this energy of just such certainty of I'm ready to go. I'm ready. I'm ready. No, no, no. I, I don't have to think about it anymore. There is nothing else to talk about. I'm good. I'm, I'm just ready. So, okay. Leave all. This is the thing. Prepare yourself for you releasing your arrow by simply making sure that you're not carrying any baggage from any past relationships into this new one. Because I think this new one, and if I've been right in my readings lately, there's just this beautiful energy coming up for you. So there is a sense of yes, but it needs to be ready. It needs to be fresh. So let yourself feel anything that you need to feel that comes to the surface over this next week and this energy can begin for you in the beginning of this weekend the weekend coming not this weekend but the weekend coming so that's going to really i think help you prepare yourself to just like let all that baggage drop you don't want to come and deliver crap or craziness to somebody else you want to just have that free um you know kind of just baggage free kind of mentality when you reach your person so um what are you carrying with you you want to be carrying freshness you want to be carrying a fresh start you want to be carrying beauty you want to be carrying sincerity you don't want to be carrying anything from the past so drop that off as you fly overseas maybe just let it drop like the waste out of the toilet of an airplane. I don't know if they really do that, but that would be, I think that's kind of sick, but whatever. Like this is the energy of like drop the waste before you get there. Be sure that you do. Let me clarify this reading for you. Leo, this is, yeah, this is email. This is communication. This is um, watching somebody, keeping an eye on somebody, um, spying on somebody. Um, Ooh. Maybe that's what you need to let go of. Like enough is enough. Either either you're letting go of just spying on somebody and admiring them without telling them and you're letting your what you're letting go is that arrow of truth. You're shooting it over to them and you're finally demonstrating, no, I'm going to just show up on their doorstep because I I need them to know that I can't stop thinking about them. Or there is this energy of letting go of somebody from the past that you couldn't get your mind off of. Uh, stop stalking them. Stop looking at them. Stop being interested in them. Like stop all of that because it's not getting you anywhere. That could be what you need to let go of. That's the clarifier of this not being able to think about, stop thinking about somebody else. And like, why? Because you keep going on their Facebook page. Why? Because you keep uh, being interested in what's on their sorry, what's on their Instagram story or their Instagram feed. That's what you need to stop in order to, sorry about that. That's what you need to stop in order for you to move on. And I do believe that there is a beautiful prospect that you already have on your mind. Now, if you don't have anybody on your mind, what you need to do is just focus, especially over the next week to just stop looking at somebody stop watching them stop thinking about them um i know it's not easy to stop thinking about somebody um so don't don't think about not thinking about them because you don't want to add that extra tear on right just allow it to pass if you have any impulses and you've gotten into the bad habit like i said of checking up on somebody on social media um don't do it like take your hand off the trigger Put your phone away, get off social media for a week. Just that's what you need to get away from or they need to get away from you. This is something needs to stop in terms of like watching each other. That needs to be released and let go. Now it could very well be what needs to be released and let go is you have to stop watching each other on social media and you have to start talking to each other for real. And the first move, Leo, would be yours. And I really do feel like you're going to go see this person. You're going to go see somebody. This is somebody. This is for those of you who know who you want. And even if they don't live outside of the area, um, outside of your area, it's almost like you just sort of showing up on their door with like a rose and come with me to dinner. Don't say much because the speech is going to be a little bit trippy, but just show and demonstrate and show up, show up. 
like no more watching, no more dreaming, no more spying, no more stalking, just show up. Now, of course, this could be vice versa. So Leo, you might be getting a visit from somebody um, that you got that yeah, you may be getting a visit from somebody that you've been interested in for a while. Um, somebody just popping up out of nowhere. Um, now this could be somebody who has kept an eye on you in front of social media, on social media. It could be an ex. If it's an ex that you don't want to see, then don't see them. Be honest. It's okay. You don't have any obligation. But this is just definitely the energy of somebody popping up out of the blue, whether it be you or the other person, to basically demonstrate how they felt about you and letting go of sort of hiding it or trying to like stalk you or letting go of that kind of energy and just like revealing, revealing the feeling, revealing the feeling. I love that. Um, yeah. So if you're curious about who might be coming towards you, definitely head over to, um, the who, the who, the extended. I'll see you guys over there. Virgo. Okay. Virgo energy. Uh, yeah. So Virgo, I have already prepared the cards. I've already shuffled them. Um, your message is waiting for you. My setup is going crazy. I'm sorry. Technical difficulties, not without technology, like crazy. Um, just with paper and pen is what I mean. So, um, yeah, let's just get right into the reading. Remember, this is the what is coming towards you during this retrograde romance. If you want to know, if you want to watch the extended, that's who is coming towards you. You could get some insights into who we're talking about here or, you know, a little bit more insight into your current lover or... There's a fruit fly in front of me and it's got him. <laughs> wow, Virgo. Thank you for tolerating that. I, I apologize. Um, um, yeah, so if you're curious about who is coming towards you, that is in the description box below. It's also in the comment section for those of you watching on mobile. So here we go, Virgo. Oh, this is so nice. Spend quality time together. Listen and talk to each other. I feel like you got this energy or a similar energy last week, but there is a call for you to just love on your boo. Just be with your boo. Don't be with anybody else. Make special time for each other. Take time off work if you have to. Yes, do it. I know you may not want to, but this is, this is the time. This is that time to slow down to um, not put so much pressure on, to actually take pressure off by lip locking, showing you care, listen to what they say. Don't judge or don't talk, but um, tell, tell how you feel, share how you feel. This is the time. Oh, look at this ooey gooey, very beautiful. You could be going away or being asked to be going away, whisked away on a romantic weekend. Um, this is very romantic energy. Um, you could just be a staycationing at home to sort of love on each other. Spend that extra time, even if it's like the couple of extra hours after work where you guys normally like turn on the television. Instead, just sort of like just be with each other or, or go ahead, turn on the television. I don't care. As long as you're holding hands while you do it. That's kind of the energy of just hold each other be affectionate physically. Like I said, you could be getting extra time to spend with each other. This is a good time to take some time off and just give that person a little bit of extra attention. This is them wanting that from you, demonstrating that, maybe even needing it. Um, yeah, maybe even needing it. Oh, wow. A new romantic cycle begins, new moon in Libra. Oh, Virgo. Wow, this is really romantic energy. And Libra is ruled by Venus. So this is like the partnership side of Venus, that love and romance and connection side. This is you and your partner. Mm. And if you're, listen, if you're not, if you're not in a relationship, this is you meeting somebody, actually physically meeting somebody who is your equal, who will balance you out and will give you just as much as you'll give them. Ooh, wow. This is like overwhelming energy because it's overwhelmingly romantic. Um, this is card has the energy of 10. So it could be that the two of you have needed to spend this time or you've been waiting a while for a partner like this or the two of you have needed to spend this time 
for a long time and now that's sort of like come to a head and you're getting it done like it has to be done um a new romantic cycle begins this is really like i feel like this piscean energy is affecting you a great deal it's okay to be emotional virgo it's okay to let your emotions out and to demonstrate them and to cry on somebody's shoulder and to blubber it's okay to connect. It's okay to like let your tears be washed away by somebody's shirt. It's okay to just need them to hug you and hold you or need to hug and hold them. It's not only okay, I think it's definitely what you're going to be needing by next weekend. Okay, let me see about this clarifying energy. Please clarify. Clarify for Virgo. Wow. Your card comes out. How? That's not a coincidence. Your energy. Have faith. Um, feeling alone. Maybe you've been feeling alone a lot lately. Maybe you've been traveling alone or you've spent a lot of time single or you've spent too much time on your own and apart from your partner. This is the time that the retrograde is going to force you. Even if it means, hopefully you're not all getting sick, but even if it means a snowstorm like in the Northeast, a snowstorm that, that locks you all in the house next weekend. It's that kind of energy. Um, because there is, there's two partnership cards, but then this clarifying energy is Virgo, which is being alone, looking, searching, seeking. So you've been feeling alone a lot lately. You've been feeling distressed, maybe a little bit, even abandoned, um, somebody given up on you or you giving up on somebody. There is that energy of, of, um, feeling isolated or missing somebody. It could very well be that too. I'm like, there's a solution. There's a, there's it, that problem will be solved next weekend. Um, who is coming towards you, especially if you're single and you've spent a long time by yourself? Well, that is in the link below. Um, I actually am really curious as to who this person may be. There's an implication that it could be another Virgo, but no, this, it, to me, it's more about you. It's more about you searching, having faith, Maybe even having faith, maybe you haven't been, you just haven't been feeling affectionate toward the person that you're with or haven't been getting affection in your life and you, you not like this feeling, you don't, that it's just, you're missing, you're, you're a very social sign, you're also a very amorous sign, you really love being in relationships, you're a mutable sign, all mutable, all mutable energies are very social energies, they need people around them, so this could be you gathering people around you, creating a social affair, kind of making sure that you're not alone, but it's, it's so important for you to be able to just slow down, hype, like, I think you've probably been very distracted and hyperventilating, not hyperventilating, but doing a lot, doing, uh, doing too much, doing not, maybe not too much, but yeah, taking on a lot of extra, uh, extra responsibilities. Something is going to happen next week that it could be divine intervention, but don't get mad at it because it is so that you could spend this much needed time with your partner. Um, a hundred percent, nobody's, I don't think anybody's going to get hurt because this is a very romantic reading of, you're just going to have an excuse to be able to be together and spend some quality time with just the two of you hashtag just the two of us next week. You need this because you've spent too much time alone lately or isolated lately. Virgo, that's beautiful energy problem solved. Um, Let's move on to Libra. Libra. Hold on. Libra. Okay. No. Oh, sorry. I, I love how interesting it is. Like, I couldn't write it down. But it turned out... I was having trouble writing it down. But it turned out it's because I was writing down the wrong time. And that's why I was having trouble writing it down. I love that. So Libra. Whew. Okay. I have already meditated on the on the energy. The card is are already shuffled, though I will I will be pulling a clarifier for you guys. Let's see what your energy is for 
of love and romance and sensuality for next weekend, the weekend after, um, sort of that next week period coming up. So let's get into it. Um, Libra, remember, this is the what is coming toward you, the energies of love. If you're wondering about who is coming towards you, that is in the extended. The extended is built exactly like this, which is you can cross watch it. You know, you, you make one purchase and you can cross watch everything and see what's going on. It's really easy to do just like this reading. So, um, that who information is down below. Um, let's see. Love endures. 43, which is the energy of seven. Let's read the message. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. <sighs> Riding through some tough times with somebody or meeting somebody for the first time that could actually get you through tough times. A, sen a sense of, and like this is really Piscean energy. A past life love coming back to you. Um, finally revisiting you, crossing the seas, crossing the distance, crossing time and space in order to finally reach you and get to you again. That's what this energy is. This is, this is um, the water of emotion, emotion bringing you and bringing the two of you closer together. It's also memory, memory bringing back Oh, that like memory brings back, memory brings back you. This is the energy of that. Do, 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 do. Oh my God, now that song is in my head. Libra, this is the energy of memory basically bringing back the reason why you fell in love to begin with. This could be the return of an ex or just the return of emotions for somebody that you thought you lost them for. Getting together and getting closer with somebody that you really love and celebrate. Um, finding the way back to them. They're finding their way back to you. Maybe actually finally, because this is a travel card, um, having the courage to finally go back home, um, talk to each other, say something to each other, or finally being able to see them again after a long time away. But this is definitely the return of a great love that has endured through a lot of things. It's time to take action, yeah. Um, this is Aries energy. Mars in Capricorn like lets us know very clearly what we want. And I think that it's become very clear who you want and who you need in your life. In other words, there will be a clarification here, Libra, a clarification of who it is that you love, who it is that you want. So you'll be able to set your course and direct yourself toward them. These are memories and emotions coming back to help guide you to who you want and who you need to be with or vice versa. They're them coming and finding the way to you. Um, but this is definitely... When the Aries card shows up, it's an implication that it has to be your energy. You're the cardinal energy. So it has to be sort of, we're sort of doubling down with Mars in Capricorn. It's like double cardinal energy. Know yourself, know what you want, choose your direction. Ambitions can be a little bit high, but I think especially for you, Libra, who tends to deliberate a lot, it's going to help you not deliberate anymore. It's going to challenge you because you're squared to both those energies. So it's going to challenge you to make up your mind and make a decision. And it's those memories from that Piscean energy, um, that, that Mercury retrograde, those memories are bringing back that confidence to help you make the decision that you need to get you to where you need to go. The confidence of you're moving somewhere, you're traveling somewhere, disbelieve in it believe that you're making the right decision and continue to make those plans uh getting sort of that second wind or second steam or knowing that you're right and knowing that you did the right thing um by deciding to go back or go to move toward them there's just this movement in you libra and movement in your decision making movement in your movement in um your physical person of, of, of traveling somewhere, getting to somebody, even if it's across the hall or across the bedroom or across the bed, um, you taking action and, and making a movement toward this love of yours that is spurred by these memories that you have. So it could be just reconciliation with somebody. Let me clarify her for Libra too. It could be just a reconciliation with that person. This is the Ace of Cups. Divine intervention. Divine, like, like, like literally spirit handing you everything that you need. Two water energies. 
I don't know if this is a water sign you're dealing with, but this is definitely water and Pisces energy that you're dealing with. So this is the resources, those cups overflowing with overflowing with emotions. And that's, it'll be, in other words, it's going to be a very emotional week for you, um, Libra, and the emotions are there. It's like, it's like flooding you. You ever see one of those wave pools? It's like flooding you to push you forward it's making you go that's why you're going to get flooded with all of these emotions is to make you make up your mind and make you make that that first step or take that step or get you out there all those emotions are happening to spur you on and push you to like fill your wind with sails and push you and with that current pushing you where you need to go that's why it's happening. Spirit is definitely here to intervene, which means that this is destined. This is fated. This is, um, you will have enough. In other words, you may be getting the resources that you need, not just the emotional resources, but the 3D resources to know that you can actually make the move or make the decision or take the action that you need to take to get to where you need to go to connect with that person all of it's going to happen. Like a spirit is just going to hand it, the resources to you, hand you that push, push you, like push you to be able to go, but not in a bad way. It's not like a bad push. That's not what we're doing. It's a push that you, a push of resources that you need to be able to make it impossible for you to say no and for you to stay where you are. You're not supposed to stay where you are, Libra. You're supposed to go. You're supposed to make this decision go go back to them go talk to them go visit them you move out to see whatever it is there's there's a, a push that you're going to get from spirit emotionally with all these memories and all these emotions but also the 3d resources to help you do whatever you need to do to to get to where you need to go because that it's like the moment is now the moment is now who is coming towards you? That's a really interesting question, Libra. That link is below. Let's see that in the extended. Thank you guys so much for um, this journey that we go on every single week. I know this was an extra long video, um, but I think that it was necessary, especially during the retrograde. Um, I'll be doing this throughout the retrograde for the next three weeks. So FYI, the extended link once again is below who is coming towards you. I'm really curious. I want to know. So I'll see you over on Vimeo.